In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps Forms on Success Property. So this is a property that triggers after your form has been successfully submitted. So I just want to talk to you guys about where I use it, how I use it, and just get you out of a couple of the bad habits that we're seeing with our support customers. So should be fun, should be fast. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today we're going to talk about Power Apps Forms and the On Success property. So the on success property is a special attribute of a form that it triggers or runs a behavior after any type of on uh, submit event. So when you submit your form, you want to send an email after you get done with that. You want to reset the form. You want to have it, you know, run a flow, whatever you want to do. Anytime you want to have something happen after a form is submitted, we're going to put that into the on success property. So I thought real quick, I'd walk you through setting that up. Over here on the desktop, I've got an app that we built in a previous video. And this was my one that just had those fun little tabs, right? It was just a different way to interact with forms. I don't know why I thought this would be the one that I do, but I thought we'd mess with this one. So anyway, what we want to do with this app is we want to incorporate so that every time that you save a change, we want to send an email, right? Because we want to have something happen afterwards. So the first thing I would typically tell you to do, right, is we're going to throw a button on here. And then we're like, all right, I want to send an email. What do I need to do? I need to add the data source. So we'd say view and data sources. And notice I don't have the data sources over here because it's an older app. So it has the older experience, but you might see the data sources over here. And so we're going to add a data source and I'm going to search for Outlook. And so then it shows my Outlook connections. We're going to add that in here. Now keep in mind, if you haven't sent an email before, I will link to a video somewhere on the screen with every single thing in the world you need to know about sending emails, because this isn't about sending emails, this is about the property. But so there you go, we've now got the data source in here. So we'll go back to the button, and we're just gonna say something like Office 365 Outlook. And then we're gonna say send email, and we're gonna say send email v2. Who are we gonna send it to? I'm just gonna send it to whoever's running the app. So user.email. Right. Remember, anybody you want, you can put in there. And the subject is, we're just going to say, you updated the form, like that. And then we'll just say, good job, right? Because this isn't about the email, this is just about sending one. But if we press that button now, I should get an email that says those things. Boom, perfect, right? Got an email, good job, you updated the form, yay us. All right. So we know the code works, right? And remember, this is my whole mantra around always solve baby problems. So now that we know that this code works, what I see a lot of you tend to do is go here to the save button and say, all right, well, after I submit a form, I know that I can do a semicolon and then have this run. And so these should process sequentially, right? So it should submit form when it's done, it should then send an email. Technically you are correct, right? This should be okay. But I can tell you that invariably that people that do this get themselves into these race conditions, right? Because they add one more thing, they do this, they do that. They start expecting data to be in other places. So the golden rule here at Power Apps 911 is that if you want anything to happen after you submit your form, then that code should not be here, right? So get rid of that. And so what you're going to do is you're actually going to click on your form. And so I think mine is called form one underscore one. Very nice name. And if we go over here and we go to the properties, there is a on success. So what do you want this form to do when it is successfully submitted? And that's not gonna matter whether they created a new form or they edited a form. Basically, this is going to trigger every time that submit form runs and is successful. All right, I guess I should have clicked on it so I can find it again. So all you're gonna do is take that same exact code and put it right here. That's it, that will do make this code run once the form is successfully submitted. But this is an ideal place for, well, what if there was an error, right? How many of you have your forms, your buttons up here set up to submit form and then navigate away? And so even if the, you, you know, if it doesn't work, uh, with no tabs, right? Whether the form fails or is successful, it's still gonna navigate them away and they're never gonna see the error messages and the warnings. So you don't ever want code after submit form. You just take that navigate out of there, we go back over here and say, hey, then send them an email, semicolon, then navigate away. And so now you've got the experience. Another thing you guys uh, asked about was, you know, well, what if I want to reset the form back to default? No big deal. The reset would go right here also. So we just say reset form and then form one underscore one because my form names are terrible. You should have renamed my form a long time ago, but that's a different problem. 
So there you go, all that code will fire after it is successfully submitted. Um, other things though that we run into here a lot of times, right? Like, so people in their email, they said, hey, I wanna have it, you know, use this field. So they go up here and be like, all right, well that was data card value two underscore one. Oh my goodness, how am I gonna remember that? Data card value two underscore one. You updated the form for, and then they'll go right here and say, data card value, data card, card value, I've forgotten already, two underscore one, oh, this is a terrible thing to do, so why should you rename stuff, people? Data card value two underscore one dot text, right? And so that way they're like, yeah, that'll get the first name. But remember that when you submit the form, a lot of you guys have end up having logic in there that might reset the form, might change the item. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. So I would never set my email up or any of the output properties of a form to reference the form fields directly. Remember, you can use the other property that we learned about in a previous video called form uh, one underscore one. Oh, underscore, oh my goodness, underscore one dot last submit and then dot first name. And so then that would give you the uh, value of the first name of the record that you just submitted. So little changes like that are gonna make your apps more stable, make more sense, avoid these weird scenarios where users are like, well, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's often because you guys are doing things in a very precarious you know, set of order that you know works sometimes but doesn't in other scenarios. So this is a, you know, a lot better looking one. Speaking of on success, right, it'd be worth mentioning real quick, we also have an on reset and an on failure. So on failure, if the form fails to submit for some reason, right, they forgot a required field, the data source wasn't happy, you know, the access denied, there was some type of error that happened, then you could have on failure trigger. So maybe you want to send yourself a, you know, an email or a Teams chat message that says, hey, you know, Susie was trying to submit the form and it failed, she's going to call you in two seconds. So you could add that type of logic to on failure. On reset, that's what we did right here, reset form. So maybe every time you reset your forms, you need to have the variables changed or you need to log that someone removed their, re reset their values. I don't know what you want to do there, but just keep in mind with your forms, you have these special fields that let you guys build better solutions. So that's it for today. Nice, quick, easy, but these are just, these are very common errors that we see and it's bad habits. Right, just my golden rule, don't ever have code after submit form. Everything that you would put there goes on, on success and do it correctly over there, you will cut down on the errors and the confusions in your app. Awesome, if you have any questions, any comments, leave them below. Ideas for future videos, right? Sometimes I always want to do like really hard complex stuff, but sometimes this basic stuff is actually more important. So remind me sometimes, you know, like, hey Shane, why haven't you covered this thing here, right? Like, cause you know, it's worth pointing out. Also, if you want to just download this app, remember you can go to training.powerapps911.com and sign up for the curated library. You can download this and all the other apps that I've ever built. And so you don't have to rebuild all these things. You can just grab them and you know reuse my code as you see fit. Cool. Well, with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.